Mike, we're talking playoffs now. Come on. Playoffs. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, playoffs? Don't talk about it. Playoffs? Uh, NFL playoffs starting. But before we get into those matchups for this weekend, I've got to ask you about teams that are sort of gearing down, resting players, maybe even, can we say it, tanking games a little bit. Um, what, what is your thoughts with that? Uh, as a fantasy sports guy who has a couple of fantasy football teams, uh, I gear up for the playoffs because I, I look for guys that maybe will be playing, but it's a frustration this time of year. It's amazing to me. This is another this is another example of the way the NFL and the way it's perceived and the way it's covered and the way it's talked about. It's kind of like the Teflon League of American sports. In in baseball, in baseball, if if two teams are in a pennant race, uh, let, let's say the Phillies and the Braves are in a pennant race, and, and and Bobby Cox opens up the paper and sees that the Phillies played the Giants last night, and the Giants sat out their their cleanup hitter, well, he gets mad and kicks up a fuss about that. Yeah. Think think how NBA teams get ripped for Oops. for tanking the season in order to get a. a you know the first pick in the draft when that's the only way you have a chance to turn it around if you're if you're a lottery team if when teams do this in the NFL they acknowledge that they're doing it they they admit that they're tanking games and the reaction is if the if the Indianapolis Colts tank a game the reaction is well was this smart for the Indianapolis Colts you think about it from the Colts point of view not from the teams that they're like blatantly putting the shaft to, I, I just, yeah, it's amazing to me. Well, first of all, um, I look at, like, what happens if they switch to an 18-game schedule? We're gonna it's going to get worse. Three and four weeks of this happening. Thank you. What about, they say, what about the, from, the, from the Colts' perspective, is what about the fans' perspective? What happens if I had a, a home game in some of these stadiums this week and these guys weren't playing? That's frustrating. So you're putting down some top coin for this. And the third thing is, what do we know about the Jets right now when, when the Colts decide to pull their players out midway through that game and then the Jets play the Cincinnati Bengals and they don't really play their guys for essentially most of the game. Amen, well. Starkey. Um, Amen. You know, so it, it's an interesting topic. Uh, let's get into the matchups right now. Yeah. We'll start with the Jets game I just brought up. The Jets now travel to Cincinnati after playing the Bengals in New York last week. It's going to be a much different game this time. Um, I... Like I said, I think I'm going to take the Bengals because the I like Jets the sort of too. slipped in because people let them get in. I like the Bengals, too. I, I'll, I'll pat myself on the back for for one thing. I, I, I There were two teams at the beginning of the season that I said on this show that I kind of like to be dark horse, to be to really come forward, and they were Cincinnati and the Saints. And I still like the Cincinnati Bengals. I think they played good defense. I've always liked Carson Palmer. I think Chad Ochocinco, who was an absolute non-factor on Sunday, I think will be a factor uh, this week, and I like I like Cincinnati. Biggest factor for me will be Cedric Benson for the Bengals and their defense for the Bengals. I think Ocho Cinco may get neutralized. The Jets do have a very good cornerback in Revis. They do. They could neutralize. And, and Cincinnati really, despite uh, Carson Palmer and Ocho Cinco, really are kind of a defense and ground game team. They've they've emerged. They've evolved in that direction. The other AFC matchup has the Bengals. I'm sorry, the Bravens going to New England. Uh, Bang I think of those guys the same because they're both a bunch of guys that are have some criminal backgrounds. I guess is why I thought that. I think no, no doubt about it. New England wins this game. It's at home. And I have it, doubt about it. You do? Yeah, I think the Ravens are a dark horse. I think the Ravens are a dark horse in the AFC, and I think your Green Bay Packers are a dark horse in the NFC. I think the Ravens have a chance to win this game. I really do. The in fact, I'm going to predict it. Why not? I predict. I like the Ravens. Go, go tell them out here. Wes Welker being out could be a big factor. Let's talk about my Packers. They travel back to Arizona after just being there. Hey, I can't pick a better spot than this time of year to go out to Arizona. I'll take Absolutely. It. Absolutely. Uh, could be a different game. The Cardinals didn't play a lot of their players very long. Bolden has a slight injury from this. I'll take the Packers to win again. I like the Packers, too. As I said, I think they're a dark horse. I think, they're, I think they've gotten better as the year going, has gone on, especially defensively. I like their quarterback. I like Aaron Rodgers. He may not be a household name. I, I, I think the Packers are, are a scary team for anybody to play right now. Last NFC matchup, Eagles-Dallas in Big D again. We sort of talked about this on another segment we did. You like the Eagles to rebound from a loss last week, don't you? I do. It's a, it's a tough call, and I really don't feel very strongly about this. I'm certain that it's going to be a close football game. I am certain that, that, that last, last week is going to bear, have little bearing on this. Uh, squeaker, I'm going to go Eagles. If Tony Romo handles the big pressure, and he hasn't shown that he has so far, but if he comes through, don't think he has a girlfriend to worry about this season. I take the Dallas Cowboys to win this Tony game. Romo is underrated. Tony, now he, he has at times in his career been overrated. Right now he's underrated. He's a pretty good player. Key factor, I think, is Tony Romo. 